Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amber Rose, also known as The Religious Hippie. My official website is up, so if you need any information, you can find it at thereligioushippie.com. And of course, as always, my link tree is in the description below. I hope you guys are all doing really well. So today's video is basically going to be five things that I feel like Catholics should do more of. Now, this video is piggybacking off of a video I did like two years ago that I was going to do a part two to, but I never actually ended up doing it. So what we're doing today is we're doing that part two that I never got around to. So yeah. But really quick, before we get into that, today's sponsor is the Little Catholic Box. Every month, the Little Catholic Box sends out a new box of Catholic items to their subscribers. And this is the month of May, so obviously we know it's the month of Mary, and they sent out a beautiful box this month. So this is one of the items. It's this beautiful Mary handkerchief, and it has her M on it from the Miraculous Medal. Another item this month is this cute statue of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. It comes in its own little stand, and I cannot wait to add this to my collection. This dish towel is another one of the items they sent out this month, Mary Garden Dish Towel. Towel. This is so beautiful, so springy. I'm in love with this. And I have to be honest with you guys, my favorite item that they sent out this month was this adorable little flower vase. On it, it says, if a little flower could speak, it would tell us all that God has done for it. I'm so ready to put a little flower in here and put it with all of my Mary statues for the month of May. So definitely go check out the Little Catholic Box. You can either subscribe to their monthly boxes and get items like this, or you can go to their website and you can purchase certain items separately. So definitely go check them out and you can use my affiliate link in the description below for 10% off your order. Okay, now let's go on to the video. Okay, the number one thing that I think all Catholics should do more of is holy hour in adoration. The Eucharist is the pinnacle of our lives as Catholics. When we go to adoration, when we do a holy hour, we are doing what the apostles of Jesus could not do. He asked them to stay awake with him for one hour to pray so that they would not fall into the sin that would be committed when the guards come to take Jesus and Judas betrays Jesus and all of that. Peter cuts off the guard's ear, Jesus has to heal it. Um, Peter denies Jesus three times. All of these things, Jesus seems to have hinted at that it could have been prevented had they stayed up with him for one hour and had prayed, but instead they slept. And Jesus warned them of this twice. I also want you guys to think about this. When you see a friend, do you just see them once a week for an hour? Or do you maybe see them a couple times a week for more than an hour? Or maybe once a week for a few hours? I personally know whenever I see any friends, I hang out with them for maybe like three to six hours and I see them at least four or five times a week. How can you have a good relationship with somebody you only see once a week for an hour? Obviously, I'm going to have people who say like, oh, well, my relationship with Christ is fine and I have friends that live long distances and I only see them once a year and we're fine. I understand. But ideally, we want to see our friends and hang out with them a lot more, right? So try to make it more often to daily mass and adoration because we are the people we surround ourselves with. The more you surround yourself with Jesus, the more you're going to be Christ-like. Okay, number two. The number two thing that I think all Catholics should start doing is saying grace in public. Look, I understand that this can be nerve-wracking at times, but we do need to live our faith boldly. And honestly, little gestures just like this and saying grace before a meal, it doesn't have to be a huge gesture or anything like this. We don't have to be like, bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts. We don't need to do that, okay? It can be a simple gesture. And I was actually listening on Relevant Radio um, a few months back. It was a, quite a while ago. But there was this message that kind of stuck with me where there was this girl who just was saying grace before a meal and a man came up to her and said, I haven't seen that gesture in a really long time. And it actually inspired him to go back to faith, like go back to mass. And so little gestures like that can have a huge impact in somebody's life. You never know who you are influencing. And so it's always good to be influencing people towards Christ. Number three, dressing nice to mass and to adoration. The way that we dress on the outside translates the way we feel about something on the inside. You wouldn't wear a stained, you know, sweatshirt, flip-flops, sweatpants, baggy shorts or whatever to go see the Queen of England. 
So why are you wearing those things? To see the creator of the universe, the king, our king, the God who made you. Why on earth are you dressing like it's Coachella? Why are you dressing like it's your bedroom? Why are you dressing like you're going to a bonfire or a restaurant? It's none of those things. This should be held above all other things that we get dressed up for. Obviously, dress appropriately. You don't want to look like you're going to the Met Gala, but you obviously need to have some reverence for who you are standing in front of, sitting in front of, kneeling in front of. That is the creator of the universe. And I notice the people who do not dress up for mass do not have respect for the creator of the universe. And that is not me being like, oh, these people don't know how to dress. That's not me judging the people and what they wear. It's an observation that I have realized and come to terms with time and time again whenever I talk to somebody who's dressed like that during mass. Number four, I think Catholics should bring God up more in conversations. I think a lot of the time we kind of just let God fall by the wayside in our conversations, but in reality, he can offer us so many open doors in conversations with others. I'm not saying like, you know, don't do it tastefully. Don't just be like, I feel like God's asking me to ask you out. Okay, that's creepy. Don't do that. But God belongs in our everyday speech. He belongs in our everyday conversations. And yet if you notice today, it is so weird, so weird for somebody to bring up God in a conversation. And isn't that so backwards? Because before it never used to be this bad. And now all of a sudden we can't even talk about God in a public place and without being banned or restricted, blah, 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 right? But as Christians, we have a duty to spread his word and we have a duty to spread God. We have a duty to tell people about him, to tell about his forgiveness, his mercy, but also his justice. And so I think it's so important that we put God back into our speech more often. And number five, prayer journaling. I get a lot of emails, DMs, tons of questions saying, why do I feel like God is not answering my prayers? And there could be a lot of reasons for that, but I find the main reason is that he does not answer our prayers the way we expect him to. And because of that, we feel like our prayers are unanswered, when in reality, he does answer them. It's just not in a way we expect. And so because of that, we have to realize that God's not always gonna give us what we pray for. He's not always gonna give us what we want. It's his will, it's not our will. But if what we want aligns with his will, he will make it happen. However, I do think there is something that goes into prayer journaling. When you write your prayers down, you don't forget them, you specifically know what you ask for, and you do this during adoration, one of the best times, though you don't have to do it during adoration. I just highly suggest that. And you can actually sit down with God and you can be there and sit there in the presence of Jesus and just write down whatever you are thinking, whatever you're praying for, and then a few months might go by and you might remember, oh yeah, I wrote that down in my prayer journal. Let me see if I've, you know, my prayer's been answered in any way. And I highly, highly suggest you to keep an open mind. Don't expect God to just give you everything you want. He's not a fairy godmother and too many people treat him like that. God wants what's best for you because he loves you. And love is literally wanting the best for another. And unfortunately, our culture has twisted so many beautiful words. It's just one of those things where we really need to understand that he is a loving father. He wants what's best for us because he loves us, but he's not going to force his will upon us. And so we really do need to be open to what he is saying. And we really do need to listen. And prayer journaling is one of those great ways we can do that. Because months from now, you might not even remember that you prayed for something small and God answered that prayer. I always like to say that God's biggest miracles are sometimes the smallest miracles that he works in our lives. So those are my five things I think all Catholics should do more of, part two. I will link part one in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye!